Do you think... Put your thinking hat on, Tim. I will. Okay. Do you think that AMD will release a similarly priced competitor to, to the 11400? Um, Zen 3 stock is improving. Yep. So I guess it depends on 7 nanometer supply and whether they feel like they need to offer that part. I'd say at this point in time, probably not. Yeah, I mean, obviously rumors are starting to heat up about some sort of future generation of Zen processors, whether that, I mean, it doesn't sound like Zen 4 will be the replacement this year, mm. but there's been talk of Zen 3 Plus and even Zen 3 XT processors at some point. So it would make sense that if there was going to be a competitor that maybe AMD would just wait until that sort of line is ready because if you're talking about, let's say, October or November, at a guess, that's when they launched their previous gen part. So year on, if it's taken them a year to get supply of Zen 3 ready, then wouldn't you just wait for their refresh? <sighs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting... that's a thing that's happening? It's an interesting one because while I haven't deeply analysed this, but obviously we know 7 nanometer supply issues, you know, things like the 5950X and 5900X, which are very expensive CPUs. They've struggled to keep them in stock. And then, you know, you have the lower end parts. The cheaper Zen 3 part at the moment is the 5600X. It's $300 US. That's a very expensive... Once upon a time, that would have been a flagship CPU. Yep. So my only concern for AMD, not that I'm concerned with what AMD do or anything, but if I was AMD, my only concern is that they have, they were heavily take, winning back market share. Yep. And with Zen 3 and the way things have been, that's pulled back a bit. And while they've got this clear advantage over Intel, um, I don't really care which side of the fence you sit on that one. AMD has a clear advantage over Intel now. It's just, that's the facts. I would think they'd want to capitalize on that. I mean, obviously it's good making money and making money helps you make future products better. But while they should clearly be taking back market share from Intel right now, they're not because of supply issues and the fact that they don't service all those, you know, cheaper markets. And they're not even doing that with Zen 2 at the moment because of course that's still a seven nanometer CPU. So I think it really does come down to that balance of, you know, what's the stock level like? Does it make more sense to put dies towards higher end products they're selling for more. And then if that supply issue is sort of resolve itself with CPUs, do we then wait for a refresh if we're going to do go down the refresh path or release a product now and then because it could be getting quite close. We've just, and then, you've just seen how like we got two examples of how powerful Mindshare can be. Yep. With Intel and Nvidia, both of their competitors, and that's why AMD's had such a rough go of it over the years. So the fact that they've like a lot of people, uh, I know a lot of Intel users are willing to sort of jump over and give AMD a shot. And if there was that $200 part, like the the 5600 non-X, I think that would be pushing a lot of people to jump on and you'd still see AMD's market share clawing back more aggressively. Because look, Intel yeah. can turn this around at any moment. Yeah, like they could. they're I mean, very capable of it. This current um, generation, which for all the issues with 14 nanometer and all that and We've talked about that a lot. A part like the 11400 is very competitive. Mm, Definitely. Well, we recommend it. And obviously we want Intel to come back because, you know, it makes it... We want competition. Makes it so much more interesting for us and it's better for people who are buying the hardware. So really, yeah, AMD have to capitalize. And in a way, it's been unfortunate that the the first time that I can remember, they're very competitive on both the CPU and GPU front. They've got these supply issues and obviously global pandemic and all that stuff that helped cause all of that. And I think another point that comes with this is, you know, it'd make not much sense for AMD to continue producing a part like the Ryzen 5 3600 mm-hmm. because that's a 7 nanometer part. Mm-hmm. So if you've got 7 nanometer wafers, why would you produce a previous gen part when yep. they could just produce a faster version like a 5600 non-X and potentially sell that for more or go down that sort of line? So I guess... Is the stock of the 3600 that continues to sell, is that just parts that were already produced? Or Yeah, I'm not sure. It's, it's really hard to, to know on that. So, yeah, I, I would expect that if supply goes down the way that it's currently heading, where these parts become like a 5600X are definitely in stock, then AMD would have the incentive to create a product in that range. So as opposed to continuing to sell the, the 3600. So uh-huh. we'll see. We'll see what happens in that in that area, but I agree, AMD should be trying to get their market share back. And Yeah, because once you win people across to your platform and they have a good experience there and they'll, Mm. they they tend to, I don't know, people- We we see that on the the Amazon CPU sales. It's like, 
even though Intel is very competitive with 10th and 11th gen mm-hmm. in the lower end of the, the market, mm-hmm. AMD is dominating sales. Like Ryzen, first gen Ryzen parts are outselling Intel's best selling uh, CPU the last time I looked for the yeah, that's true. pricing thing. So that's right. It's, it's, interesting. it's a, yeah, it's a difficult argument to make because they're selling CPUs. That's right. So, so yeah. they're making money. Mm-hmm. That's what drives them. <laughs>